my mind is very active. And if I chanted my mantra once, and then allowed my thoughts to sort of swirl around it for a while. And then if I was still, if my mind was still with the mantra, I was only then going to say it again. I would never get a second mantra in because the minute that my thoughts started swirling around the mantra, they would be like one of those, you know, you ever, you know, you know those like, spinners yeah the tops right so you spin it here and it starts spinning here and then before you know it it's spinning all over the room and you know gone back into the corner and you've got to bring it all the way back and so my thoughts tend to do that they could begin by spinning around my mantra over here but if I let them go well they would just spin themselves into a frenzy so I would never get back to a second recitation of my mantra, unless I happened to be already. I mean, if I were sitting in the middle of Ganga Arati, I could probably maintain it. There are, there are special moments, times, places, experiences, occasions, where yeah, even without effort, the mind is still. But those are much more, I have found the exception than the rule. And I would, I would hesitate to give myself a practice that required me to be sitting in Ganga Arati or sitting in a very deep meditation or sitting someplace that touched me very, very deeply. Because I think the rest of the time my mind would just wander around. So the practice that I've been given I'll tell you that and then I'll tell you how I've adapted it slightly. The practice that I was given was simply to chant the mantra a certain number of times on a mala. So if you're going to do, say, 11 rounds of your mala, so you would chant the mantra with each bead and you would turn the bead of the mala and you'd get to the end and you'd spin it around and you would do that until you had done 11 malas or 18 malas or three malas or however many malas you had decided to do. And if the mind wanders, you just bring it back. But the, the goal is always stay with the mantra. In fact, the teachings that that I have heard include that not only should you chant your mantra, but you should actually see your mantra, you should hear your mantra, you should taste your mantra. I mean, literally, I had somebody actually ask once, well, what exactly does it, you know, how do you taste your mantra? And I think, I think what the teaching is just that all of your senses are so one with the mantra, that they're so centered and focused on the mantra that the mantra is all that is happening in your being. And so the eyes, what do the eyes do? They see. So the eyes are seeing the mantra. And the ears, what do they do? They hear. So they're hearing the mantra. And the tongue, what does it do? It tastes. So it's tasting the mantra. That it, it should be that all consuming, you could say. Now, the way that I've slightly adapted that, just because I tend to be um, I tend to hold myself up to pretty high internal standards. And I do have a mind that wanders. And I am someone who by nature is always looking for a shortcut. And so, I mean, that was just my way in school all the time. I mean, I really wanted to get good grades, but if I could get really good grades and do 10% of the work, I was not someone who would say, oh, well, no, you know, I really need to do all 100%. If I could get an A on 10%, I would do it. So what I find when I chant my mantra is that occasionally... By God's grace, not nearly as frequently as it used to happen, but nonetheless, occasionally, my mind wanders. And I'll be spinning beads with my fingers, but my mind is not on my mantra. My mind is somewhere else entirely. And I refuse to give myself credit 
for any beads that I've done when my mind isn't there. And so I'm actually the only person I know who goes backwards on a mala sometimes because the minute that I discover that my mind has wandered, I try to take as good a call I can as how many beads my mind has been off of the mantra for. And so if it was four, I'll make it five. If it was five, I'll make it six. Again, just to ensure such that at the end of the day, whether I've chanted one mala, because it took me all morning to get through it because my mind was scattered, or whether I chanted 11 or 18 or however many it was, what I, what I can stand up knowing was I chanted all of those malas present with my mantra. Because every time I wasn't present, I made myself go back and do it again. Now, as I said, that's, that's a, a variation that I have not gotten any official permission for. So I can't, I can't speak for the official validity of that, that variation of it, but it's my personal variation. So what I would say is do, do what works for you. If you find that your mind wanders, don't, don't tell it to swirl around the mantra after you've chanted it. Allow, see whether you can have all of the senses, including the mind, be on the mantra while you're chanting it. So keep chanting it, keep turning the beads, keep saying it. If, if you need the lips to be moving in order to keep the mind there, because it's easier to keep the mind there, make the lips move. Move the lips, chant, turn the beads, and try to bring all of your senses. I mean, don't drive yourself crazy trying to figure out what does my mantra taste like, but just... Try to make it a full sensory experience. That it's just mantra. That is chanting itself. It's not me chanting, but just mantra. <laughs>